July in the kitchen garden in Scotland. Believe it or not, it's actually a touch on the chilly side today and it's very windy. But July is an awesome month. In fact, it's a really special month in the garden to us. Not just because it's when everything is harvestable, but we'll go into all the whys and what for's later. First, I've got some stuff to pick. So beetroot has been an awesome harvest. This lot are destined for some roasted beetroot and roasted tomato soup. Um, there'll be a wee bit left over, so we'll maybe do some beetroot hummus and I could use some herbs from the herb bed and make some nice wee crackers to go with that. But yeah, brilliant year. So we've got some of these big gargantuan beasts. We've got lots of just nice, normal little size ones that are awesome to roast off and they're super sweet. But we started the beetroot this year along with the carrots in root trainers in the greenhouse because although it's July, which it technically is like midsummer, um, it's been quite a wet, cold season to start with in Scotland. Spring especially here is quite cold and it can be hard to get a lot of your root veg going quickly in the beds and it's quite frustrating. So it was something I experimented with that worked an absolute treat and that was to get your carrots and beetroot and things going in the greenhouse early and that way you can plant them out once it's a bit warmer outside. Um, it doesn't have to be a root trainer but I used a root trainer and found it was awesome because it also meant I could get them planted on and there was very little disturbance of the roots that way so it just worked brilliantly. Um, I haven't tried it but I'm assuming you could probably do the same thing with little pots or whatever. But yeah, so beetroot. Here's your first thing. Awesome success, Fabby beetroot harvest. There's still loads to go. I need to get some carrots now as well. I'm just doing this on record. Have you ever seen such a perfect and beautiful carrot? Look at this. You could have bought that in the supermarket. <sighs> Ruler straight. For those of you who don't grow carrots, this is unusual. This is much more like a homegrown carrot. <laughs> but again, cannot fault the fantastic harvest of carrots. Um, another couple, but this is going to go into a fantastic carrot and ginger salad. It's quite zingy. So what I do is, you'll, if you've not heard the spiralising, basically there's a widget you've got that you can cut the carrots into super long noodles. So I do that and then some lemon juice and ginger and stuff. Oh, it's so good. It, it just is summer in a bowl. Fabby. So that's what they're going into. Now, I gave you guys a bit of a courgette update last week. And you can tell by the massive hori hori I'm in here with, I forgot to check on them. And I'm in here with no gloves again. They're just, there's two of these big, huge things I need to pick today. Um, they're not brilliant when they're that size. They're not full of flavour. Um, so they're probably going to end up as courgette fritters where they've got all grated up and put through with some feta cheese, that kind of thing make fantastic critters or veggie burgers, whatever you want to call them. That's probably where they're going. I've got one to get over here as well. Yeah, I said I had two. I've got three. Three monster courgettes. And of course, red currants. As you can see, It's a bit like the strawberry situation. <laughs> We've just... Oh, it's just been crazy this year. So many red currants. Okay. That's as many as I can fit in this bowl. So that's that for just now. So I've done a wee update on the courgettes with you. 
Um, and we talked about last week the fact that I had powdery mildew. Um, it's a right pain in the neck. Uh, not on top of it at all. I'm just having to cut leaves off. None of the remedies that all the standard gardening remedies that everyone tells you to use, none of them are working. And to be honest, I'm not surprised because over the years there's a lot of talk about this and the fact that these things just don't work for a proper outbreak. If you get in there really, really early, they can help. But when you get a proper outbreak, it's a bit late. And you actually, although you can buy all these fungicides and things, you actually can't buy anything that will take powdery mildew away once it's properly got a hold. Or at least you can't if you're not a commercial gardener, landscaper, that kind of thing. And um, because they are such strong fungicidal chemicals that they don't sell them to just anybody, at least not here in the UK. So I'm just having to cut leaves and stems off as I see it, hope it doesn't spread. Because theoretically, it can get blown by the wind and spread around to different plants, but hopefully keeping on top of it. However, it doesn't seem to be affecting the crop. I am getting loads of courgettes, and as you saw, they are monsters. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, the actual powdery mildew seems to be focused around the quad grows. It's not as bad in the little pot at the back fence, and it is nowhere to be seen on the courgette in the bed. So at the moment, I'm going to say the courgette in the bed looks much, much bigger and much healthier than the three that are in pots. The two that are in the quad grow at the minute are still quite small and they're not looking as good as the one that's in the bed. So at the minute, courgettes pl planted directly into the bed or the soil seems to be winning, but I'll keep you up to date on that. I'm looking around to see what else I want to tell you about, all the exciting things. Told you about beetroot and carrots. <laughs> So chuffed, coming on brilliant. You saw the strawberries. I had so many strawberries this year. Oh, it was so good, except I got really sick of them. But such a brilliant crop. Um, I forgot to show you the bed, actually. I'll take you out and show you that. I was going to say in a minute. Actually, I'll cut it in here with the magic of video. As you can see, the strawberry bed is now looking much better than it was last time we spoke about strawberries because um, season has now passed for me. So the strawberry bed has now been pretty much stripped of all the strawberries and I've taken off a good chunk of the leaves to let the light and air in and let it kind of get its bearings again before winter hits. But that also has let me put up all the little strawberry runners because it is time for me to swap the plants. That bed is three years old now, so I need to swap out all the plants for new ones and I'm probably going to move them to another bed. I'm kind of having to think about what I'm wanting to do for next year. So that's part of all of that. Um, but back in the greenhouse now. So let's do you a wee update because I'm sure you've noticed those amongst you who are eagle-eyed, it's slightly different. So the thing is, the big Quad Grow Plus unit has gone. Um, it, it worked brilliantly, but it worked too brilliantly, if that makes sense. Um, I just... It's too good and things grow too well and it just ends up completely overcrowded and I'm really not comfortable when it's like that. So this is the second year I've started off in it and then changed my mind, so I'm not going to do it again. But basically what I've done is I have taken all of the herbs and stuff out of the big quad grow plus and as you can see, I've put my old quad grow up and I've put my pepper plants in it. And I have got some peppers looking awesome lots of them. So we'll try and get you uh, some good shots of that. Uh, waffle time. Herbs are on this side. So tarragon is still looking absolutely fantastic. I'm so chuffed. The dill um, has pretty much, I think it's come to the end of what I'm going to get. So I've got some more dill planted up now in this pot. Basil, as you can see, um, I have made about five lots of pesto now on top of all the usual cutting it for salad and all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, it is doing awesome. And this, for you guys who are wondering, yup, this is the basil you saw me do in the video about keeping shop-bought herbs alive. This is the same stuff. This is it. So there you go. Um, and the whole, th I was talking about how you prune it. That's what I've been doing. So you see here, it's also bushy because it's lots of double layers coming out because I'm pruning it back that way. Um, so as usual, I'll shove that video up above me here. Nope, here. Oh, I can never remember. 
Um, I'll shove it up above. No, I'm going to get it right. Hang on. I have to visualise what it looks like when I watch YouTube. I think it's up here. And again, see the new subscribers? This is an ongoing joke we've been having because for the last five years, I've never got this right. So I'm going to shove it up here. That was an awful long way to say. And up here, you'll find the video where I talked about keeping your shop bot basil alive. And that will be followed by the video about pruning your basil to make it all bushy and lovely and last all season. One day I will get that right. I've also, in this little one in the chilli grow, I've potted the up. No, I have. Oh, it's going to be one of those videos. I have planted some cut and come again salad leaves. So, and it'll be a case of just when it needs refreshed, I'll keep doing that. But they're in there. So, yeah, so the two chilli grows are back. The big quad grow is back. What's that? Tomato? Oh, yeah, tomatoes. I suppose you'll be wanting to know about tomatoes, won't you? Let's have a look then. Right, I'm going to start at this end first. Normally I start with Jim, but I've got a lot to tell you about Jim, so we'll come back to him in a minute. We're going to start with this guy. So, this one. Hello. I'm going to move the camera. I'm up on my tiptoes, look. Okay. This is the Sweet Million, and it was the first tomato plant to give me ripe tomatoes. I have eaten four of these so far. <laughs> if you don't grow your own tomatoes, you just do not understand that moment. And everyone who does grow their own tomatoes is currently watching this video going, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, there is nothing like a tomato straight from the plant. But, oh, it is just the best flavour ever. So yeah, so this guy has started giving me ripe tomatoes, which is not bad because this is the end of July now, but that's that's normal for Scotland. And that's the thing. Don't just assume because other people are getting ripe tomatoes that you should. Remember, your, we your weather, your climate, your area, how things work, we're all different, okay? In Scotland, end of July is kind of normal for us. So that's that one. Next is my lovely Marmand. Now, these are the ones that I call the big, ugly, beefsteaky things. Um, this has been awesome this year. I've got so many tomatoes on this plant, and they're huge, big things as well. So one is just about starting to ripen. Not long, well, no, that's a lie, actually, it's a beefsteak, it'll be another three or four weeks, but theoretically, not long. It's doing awesome. Um, the only thing is it's heavy as, it's really, really heavy, so I'm kind of having to add bits of string and stuff to keep it upright. Um, so, yeah, so, first two plants. The next one is the, the whole Roma debacle. Again, a few guys are like, what? Go back to, in fact, go on Instagram and have a nosy through I put a thing on there and I talked about this in the potting up tomatoes video, I think it was. But I mixed up the labels and the peppers and tomatoes and I had them both labelled as Roma. And then I got all mixed up about which ones were which and we planted up plants before they were big enough to tell. So it was quite a drama. So Roma is next. I'm just going to move you again. So this one is Roma and as you can see, it's these nice plum tomatoes. So again, I have got loads of tomatoes on here. Nothing even close to being ripe yet, but I think it's going to be a good harvest. And also what you can see, and this is a great one for the guys that are new to growing tomatoes. This is how you tell the whole thing about how you prune a tomato is whether it is a determinate or a boost. Okay. And what that means, it grows to a determined height and then stops growing. Determinate. This one is hitting the roof. This is an indeterminate. These are the ones that you prune down to one stem or a vine, okay? Indeterminate, because they'll keep growing and you have to decide when you're happy with how big it is and chop the top off to stop it getting taller. So, indeterminate, determinate, indeterminate height, determinate height. That, that's it, that's the only difference, okay? Now, awesome, loving it, fabulous, Jim. Let's talk about Jim. Jim has given me one ripe tomato so far, and there are loads here you can see that are almost ripe, because Jim is an indigo blueberry tomato, so he's a little blue cherry, and what happens is, 
they're this beautiful green and purple and when they're ripe they go mostly a kind of reddy colour with a purple just at the top okay now poor Jim has been through the wars he got too big um basically basically I tried to grow him as a boost because he's not he's an indeterminate but I have grown him as a boost tomato a few times and it's worked brilliant and you get so many tomatoes but they do end up getting enormous and I realised with the new quad grow system this year it is smaller lengthwise so there's not as much space and it just wasn't coping so I had to then strip them back and try to turn them into the vine grown at the last minute and unfortunately I'm not sure if that means I've trashed them because he lost an awful lot of foliage that way um, so I'm doing my best he's not got a lot of fruit on him just now but fingers crossed the other thing I'm a bit worried about he did have a lot of um, leaves on him until the beginning of this week and unfortunately they were all dying like really really badly so um, I'll, I'll shove a photo up so you can see but I panicked because I thought oh is it blight and then a bit of a look at it no it's not blight it could possibly be tomato canker so I'm keeping an eye out to check for that I'm a bit worried so I'm keeping an eye out to check because if it is that that's devastating and I'll probably lose everything so I'm keeping an eye um, at some point I will make a decision probably quite quick but I'll see what it is I mean it might be something else I don't know it's the first time I've seen this but we'll just keep an eye but yeah, poor Jim's not doing great, so we'll have to wait and see. Poor wee soul. Yeah, wee soul. But anyways, peppers. I just thought I'd randomly change the camera angle just for wackiness. Right, the peppers, two Roma peppers, getting peppers on them, looking awesome, look at this. These grow the big long peppers. Now, I've been doing these for a few years now, and we do really like them, so these are back. On this side, these are normal, what we in the UK call bell peppers. I think in the States you call them sweet peppers. These are California Wonder, and they will grow to be the nice big bell pepper size. And again, I'm quite happy. I have my paintbrush because the thing with growing in the greenhouse with tomatoes and peppers, you need to help them to pollinate. Kate gets incredibly embarrassed about this stuff. She won't even watch me doing it. Um, but uh, basically, you need to kind of help spread the pollen around because there's not a lot of butterflies and bees and that kind of thing in the greenhouse to help or wind or whatever. So if you want a good harvest, trust me, doing this will give you a much, much bigger harvest. Again, I'll put a video up. See, I'm confused already. I think it's up here. Right? We're going to test it. I'm pretty sure it's up here. No, it's not. It's up here. I'm going to put a video up above showing you the whole thing about pollinating your peppers and tomatoes I totally advise go and have a watch because it is a brilliant thing to do and will massively increase your harvest but I am very very happy with these they're all looking brilliant so that is all my fabby growing things in the garden at the minute which I'm sure you can agree I need to stop leaning on this because it's wobbling the camera So I'm sure as you can agree, that is fabby for July. All the growny things are looking awesome. I have got two massive bags of compost from the compost bin. So I'm all excited because they're going to get used in a fabby new project because we're going to do some work on the bed. I'm not telling you now. It's going to be a video about this stuff. So come back. Um, what else? I was going to tell you about why July is special. So let me show you that. You have to go outside though. The main reason July is such a special thing for us in the garden is because we use it a lot in July because I'm filming this today, it is the 29th of July. Tomorrow is my birthday. So normally, not this year because it's locked down, but normally on my birthday we have a big barbecue and we have all the friends over and we have a big garden party and it's awesome. But also, five years ago on the 31st, so not tomorrow, but the day after, five years ago to the day, I stood here, Kate stood there. We were absolutely terrified, but in front of all of our friends in our garden, Kate and I got married on this very spot. 
We had a marquee or a gazebo, to be honest. We had tables and chairs. We had food put on. We had music. We had all of our closest friends and family all right here in the garden. And that's the thing. This is our special space. And this is where we got married. Gardens are so much more than what you grow. They're an extension of you and your home and your life and your family and your friends and all of that other stuff. And July is just an awesome time to do all those kind of things in the garden. So that is why July is such a special time for us. Ah, and on that note, as usual, if you like these videos, grow those likes by hitting that thumbs up down below. And if you hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification, YouTube will tell you every time I post a video. Because you kind of know I try and post them at 10 on a Sunday morning, but sometimes there are little extras during the week. So that way you'll know about it. From our fabulous July garden and our amazing raised beds and Fabby greenhouse, I will bid you goodbye. I'm off to start celebrating for my birthday. At my age, you have to make the most of them. See you guys. Bye.